As we continue our countdown to the election, we've mentioned the fact that Donald Trump spent today in Florida criticizing Obamacare, but will the problems with Obamacare help him attract women voters? I recently spoke with my old Capitol Hill colleague, Marsha Blackburn. The Tennessee representative and I began our discussion by talking about the best argument for women to have to support Donald Trump. When it comes to women in this campaign, the number one issue is national security. And uh, we know that Donald Trump is the one who's come forward with the plan for how you actually deal with ISIS and how you rid the world of the scourge that has been terrorism, radical Islamic extremism. He also has a plan for securing the border, which would end illegal entry, whether it is drugs or sex trafficking, human trafficking. And the other thing is he has a plan for how to beef up our military and having a major military post in my district, this is something our military families want to see done. The other thing, women talk a lot about job stagnation, wage stagnation, and want to see economic growth. We're kind of stuck on the one, one and a half percent GDP growth every year. And having a true economic plan that is going to foster growth and help the economy to return to a point of prosperity for the individuals that create and make and maintain that economy is going to be important. I think one of the things too, J.D., when Trump talks about his economic policies, he takes it from the point of view of the private sector and the individual. He doesn't come up with these plans like Hillary has that are going to be a government managed economy. That is what we see in China. We see that in Russia. Those are not the type economy that we want to have. Not even uh, what you see in some of the European countries or the EU where the government has the lead in whatever productivity sector that is, where you have a national bank of of whatever the country is. People like the diversity of a private sector economy. Uh, Marcia, there are some women, and let's just acknowledge it, they believe they have to vote for Hillary because she is a fellow female. What would you say to those women voters? Vote for the, the most well-qualified person for the job. And much of Hillary Clinton's experience is the wrong type experience. It's all been government-based experience, if you will. And there, I encourage women to look at how the Clintons have ended up with $250 million when they left the White House in 2001 and they were dead broke. And they have never established a business. They've never even established a consulting firm. Uh, they have never held a patent or have created something or an invention. What they've done is to utilize a not-for-profit, the Clinton Foundation, that was set up to do a presidential museum, archives, and research center, and then became the Clinton Global Initiative. So that is how they made their money. Most women know that they're holding down one or two jobs, plus they're a wife, they're a mother, they're tending to kids, they're multitasking all day long. And I would encourage them to look actually at the resume and the narrowness of Mrs. Clinton's experience. Marcia, RNC Chairman Reince Priebus appeared on Face the Nation Sunday, and the chairman says Donald Trump's concern about possible voter fraud is understandable. Let's look and listen. I'm telling you, we, we know this is not millions of people, but what we're talking about are things like, if you look at the Milwaukee Police Report that came out about six years ago. The Milwaukee Police Department put out a 70-page report on election fraud in Milwaukee. This wasn't the Republican Party right. putting out the report. What I'm telling you is that uh, this is real, so let's yeah. not, let's Absolutely. not but go down the, this road where we're acting like oh, this is some figment of people's imagination. But I think uh, so we hear rights right there, and it does seem the media, the corporate uh, media, is trying to belittle Mr. Trump's hesitancy on his response last week uh, during that debate with Hillary Clinton. But, but is he right to say, wait a minute, I'm going to step back and take a look 
especially in light of what the chairman had to say about voter fraud. Well, many of the <laughs> Democrats will say, well, we win the popular vote and there is no election fraud. Now, we know about uh, voter registration fraud because we have election commissions. Every county, every state has an election commission. And thank goodness, J.D., elections are run at the local level. And that, the, these are the individuals that are rooting out this voter fraud. And we do know that Florida, which had a problem, you know, uh, Port St. Lucie last time, I think they had like 120% of all the registered voters showed up to vote in that 2012 race. So you know this is transpiring. What you want to do is to make certain you get out in front of it and you clean those voter rolls up before people go to the polls. Now, states like New Hampshire that have day of registration, they have to set up a system where they are going to be able to guarantee the citizens of that state that yes, indeed, it is one man, one vote, and that people from outside the state are not coming in and registering and voting day of the election on November 8th. Let's turn to the schedule for Mr. Trump heading down the home stretch with uh, two weeks remaining in this race. Uh, this week, uh, he has six events scheduled uh, early on in so-called swing states. Now we take a look at the swing state map and it appears that Mr. Trump is uh, hanging tough, winning in Ohio, but uh, the real clear politics averages of polls puts uh, Mrs. Clinton up in Pennsylvania, Florida, Virginia, and North Carolina. Uh, Marsha, would you, uh, I know you don't want to concede those things, but do you believe Mr. Trump has the time now to flip those, uh, those other swing states before November 8th? I do believe he has time to flip those states, whether it's Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, Utah, Arizona. People want to focus on the issues, and if I were Mr. Trump, I would spend every waking hour talking about emails, talking about the foundation, talking about his Gettysburg address that he gave, and his plans for the first 100 days in office. That is where I would put my emphasis. Uh, of course, your name appears on the ballot every two years as a member of the House of Representatives. And let's talk right. some about down ballot elections. It seems the angle that the Washington corporate media is insisting on trying to drive home is Republican concern about these down ballot races. Are Republicans, in fact, concerned about hanging on to their seats in the House and Senate? We are going to hold the House, I have no doubt. And I tell you, I think we're going to hold the Senate also. I have been in some of the other states, some of these states where we have races, and our candidates are doing great. The other thing is our races are focused on vote, voter turnout and grassroots efforts. Marsha Blackburn, Congressman from <laughs> Tennessee's 7th Congressional District. It's great to have you on tonight from Newsmax New York. Thanks so much. Good to be with you. Thank you.